Windows Vista has gone through a long history of development, 6 years in total. For that long, there must be many builds that we can check out. Hi everyone, I'm Everything Windows, and this is Windows Vista Beta 1, which includes build 5098 and 5112. Starting with the logon screen, it has a fresh new look with the semi-transparent Windows logo at the upper left with user options at the bottom. Compared to with 5048, which only has the classic logon screen. Here we are on the desktop of Windows Vista, build 5112. Why do I pick 5112 in first place? Well, I, I'll tell you later. But first, we can see that there are significant changes on a desktop and the taskbar. Both have a different look. While the desktop only receives a background change, the taskbar looks more polished with a dark theme and the start button being black. This also closer to what we see in the final version of Windows Vista. Additionally, there are two additional icons. Install supplemental drivers, that is supposed to install drivers that support in-development features on View 5112, and learn more about Avalon and Indigo that provides an explanation about Avalon and Indigo. It prompts you to also install WinFX SDK. But that's for developers, we're only just average Joe testing out builds. Checking out the start menu, the start button now gets recolored to green when both hovered over and pressed. As for the start menu layout, the user picture was re-added, the my prefix seen in several user folders has now been removed. The search bar at the bottom is now separated from the recent apps list. And icons at the right side are now changed to align more with Vista's future design. One thing I kinda notice is that the Internet Explorer icon uses the Longhorn variant. Neat one. Let's check out several items from the start menu. Starting with Help Center. It works here with all its topics and subtopics. Although we must note that this is a development build, so yeah, topics inside are subject to change. And also, it's still work in progress too. Next, Control Panel. The category view has been overhauled with a look similar to the final version. But as a beta one, it's still convoluted with so many categories. Some of them can be merged like sound with hardware. Well, apart from that, we can switch to the classic view to look at each applet. Add a remove programs applet now includes all applets related to programs and OS updates. By opening the applet, you can modify installed programs and updates, set default programs and associations, and even viewing games. Auxiliary display is for, uh, yeah, configuring an auxiliary display. When I google what it is, it's this. <laughs> is it correct? Well, tell us in the comments down below. Mouse and security center have no change. But there is solution to problems, which is a predecessor to troubleshooting applet. And lastly, sync manager. Back to the start menu, you can see that the games folder has been removed from the applications list and is now sitting peacefully on the right side as the games option. When you click it, it opens Games Explorer which was introduced in build 5098. At the first glance, it already kind of resembles the final version, but there is still a few things to tweak around. But that's okay, I can play any game in there such as Spider Solitaire just fine. Now, another feature related to games was added, parental controls. This feature is, it, well, self-explanatory. You can customize the rating system used for these games between ASRB or PEGI. You can measure which type of games you want to play, excluding any game, or anything you want to control. It's right there. Now, opening File Explorer, there are several minor changes to make it more refined with the final design, such as better navigation bar design, command bar and details pane now uses better color, SCO UI is more widely used within the program, and the menu bar is hidden by default. Also, the bug that exists here, which only displays the first 50 items, is now fixed. O2 
Oh yeah, the arrow direction in the breadcrumb is pointing correctly to the right. Lastly, Search Now has a better user interface, although the legacy search bar is now disabled. Another thing to point out is that in view 5098, it's the first build to support EFI on non itanium machines, but the implementation is unknown as well as any possible findings of it running inside any virtualization or real machine. But what's starting to appear is TPM support, which can be found on system 32 forward slash drivers. I wonder if they will absolutely use this to push people to use for their newer operating system. If you didn't know already, I am using Windows Vista Build 5.1.1.2 for demonstrating all beta 1 changes in this video. Although there are many other beta 1 builds like there in the beta wiki, they are mostly unleaked and only 5098 and 5.1.1.2 are available so far. And 5.1.1.2 is the latest in the entry, so yeah, I use 5.1.1.2 instead. But if there's any other beta 1 builds leaked to the public, I'll make a video of it, stay tuned! As for themes and customizations, no massive changes apart from the XP theme being removed here, and the backgrounds yeah, are still from XP. What about system applications? Well, early implementations of Internet Explorer 7 can be seen in this build, as it starts to align with the later Aero design language. And tabs! Tabs are here! Woo! Yeah, baby! And a refined layout with the menu bar and several commands merged into one. One sneaky change is that references to NCSA Mosaic have been removed, starting from build 5098. Windows Media Player received smaller changes like larger player buttons, collapsed volume slider, and smaller seek bar. And that's just that for default system applications, as well as no changes in task switcher. But there is a change in security options with the logon background and the security options listed vertically. Apart from those, well, there are several applications added in beta 1. First of all, Windows Backup. Well, not exactly added, but it's actually an upcoming redesign of the already existing anti-backup program which will now prompt you to backup if your hard disk was detected on the verge of failure. You can see how the prompt would look like when you enter DFDWiz into the run dialog. The prompt is a work in progress of the Aero Wizard. Another set of applications added in beta 1 is Network Presentation. Broadcast a presentation is the first app from the set. This allows you to stream your presentation to any computer that has this set of pro software. By setting up a password, and there you go, your computer is ready to present. The next one, connect to a projector program, which will list available projectors in the network, in case if you want to see a presentation in the projector. And view a presentation to view any presentations available. And there we go! It displays the screen! But yeah, it's glitchy, I know. Before I go to the main guest of the build, you can turn your AP on or off. Is it user account privileges? User account protection? Yeah, I don't know. Tell us in the comments if you know. Now, here comes the main guest of the build, Aero. Yes, it is available in this build. Well, while I can't show you the way to enable it since I've tried to enable it dozens of times and yeah, I decided to just give up and ask for help. <laughs> I'm gonna use another build 5.1.1.2 virtual machine, which is inside of an older version of VMware, which is on Windows 8.1 on VMware. Yes, <laughs> VMception, don't ask me. Apart from that, you get Aero here. The Aero seen in this build is quite different from the final version, mainly the caption box that's black rather than transparent and red. And yeah, that's it. It's pretty unstable to run Aero like this 
as it just tends to be shy or will not show it at all. The last one is Windows Experience Index, or WinSAT for now. It's currently text only, and you have to remember very specific commands to test it out. I'm gonna show you several of them. D3D is, yeah, well, Direct 3D. But you have to add several switches to display the graphics you want to benchmark. And it requires so many patients to get it running. For me, it shows, but it doesn't display anything at all. DWM is for testing desktop window manager components such as window compositing, Aero, and others. It also doesn't show up for me. Gosh. CPU is for testing CPU capabilities. Features for compiling list of devices used by the computer. And memory for... memory. You don't really need to remember these commands in the feature, as you can just do it with one single click. For beta 1, you already get a concept of what the next version of Windows will be, but unfortunately, there are gonna be hiccups along the way. But I guess, yeah, this development phase is just the beginning.